Hi, Joey, Chris here. Hey, I wanna ask you a question. When was the last time you had a competent person inspect your fall protection gear? Well, guess what? We're gonna do a micro inspection today on beam straps and see how to inspect them and also how to choose the right beam strap. So first, let's start off with this guy on the end. If I was gonna look or inspect this uh, beam strap, I would notice right away that it is faded. It's almost white. That's pretty interesting. When it started out, it was this color and now it's this color. You wouldn't have to do anything more at that point other than throw it in the trash. And I recommend if you're gonna throw it away, take a picture of it before you get rid of it. You can see here that this one is also faded, but you would have to inspect it to make sure that there's no cuts. What do I mean by that? If I looked farther down the unit here, I would see that there is a burn mark on the end and that there's burn marks inside. You can also tell that through this unit, there are little hard brown spots. That tells me that somebody is welding while they're using this product, and this is not the right beam strap to be using. If you are working around hot materials, I would recommend you go to a welder's style beam strap. What's the difference on it? This is either made out of Nomex or it's Kevlar. And the other part is you will always see that it has yellow stitching. That is the Kevlar stitching. So remember, if you're gonna be welding or torching, this is the style of a beam strap you wanna use. You will also notice that there is a difference between the way these look. This one here is a single strand of material with no wear pad. When I sell these units, I recommend my customer buy the premium brand. What's the difference? This particular beam strap here has a wear pad on the bottom. This would go on the abrasive material or the hot material or the wood, wherever it's gonna go, and then the load component is at the top. So the wear is on the bottom, the load is on the top. These will last much longer. Before we do anything else in the inspection, you wanna go on the manufacturer's website of this particular product and make sure there hasn't been a recall. There's been a lot in the last couple of years and you wanna make sure that you're not passing a piece of equipment that might have had a manufacturer's flaw. So now that we know that this particular beam strap, it hasn't been recalled and it's good to inspect, we wanna look at the stitching. First thing we wanna do is make sure there's no broken strands. Again, how do we know well, how many st uh, stitches can be broken? We would know by going to the owner's manual. It will tell you what they will allow. Second thing we wanna do is go all the way down this strap and make sure that there's no cuts or frays throughout the unit. Check the back side as well. Again, like I said, this is the wear side and this is the load side. Second thing you wanna do is you wanna look at the D-rings. Make sure that there is no cracks. We wanna make sure that there's no uh, rust. We wanna make sure that the cadmium plating is still in good uh, uh, working order. And we wanna check both ends to make sure that this particular uh, unit works well. The other thing is you'll notice that these two D-rings are different. This particular beam strap is meant to have the smaller D-ring run through the larger D-ring and then pull it all the way through. This is the preferred unit most people like to buy. Conversely, we have a lander that has the D-ring here, and then there's a loop on the other side. You would pull it through the loop and then bring it down. It's important to know when you're inspecting your uh, beam straps that you're not using a lifting sling. Now, most lifting slings will have values printed right on them. If you're using it in a basket or a pull-through, in most cases, if it's a two-by-two, I and I, they'll typically work. The problem is the manufacturers of the lifting slings do not give you permission to use it in fall protection. So you would have to go to a fall protection manufacturer and buy the product that they offer. If you thought that this was helpful and you'd like to see some more videos, go to my YouTube channel, Fall Protection with Joey Chris, and I wanna thank you for listening.